Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope whatever you're up to today, Tuesday the 19th of September, that you're having a nice and pleasant one. Oh, are you doing the workshop? When I run these workshops, um, I find that the participation is low in comparison with when I said, oh, I'm looking for submissions or when there is a writing competition, for instance. But I only run these workshops because I haven't um, read people's material, the content, their poetry and the short stories. For about 18 months, <laughs> I have come to the conclusion that there is a dire need <laughs> to look at how English is used in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the countries that I target. And I'm not doing it to be offensive, to make people feel uncomfortable. I don't laugh at anyone here. A lot of people make mistakes when they um, come into my page. I just correct them if I know the answer, because I don't always know the answer, do I? Ah, so you can it again. Um, these workshops that I do look at how English is used in countries like Sierra, Malawi, Nigeria, because predominantly the page we have followers from Malawi, Sierra Leone, and Zambia, and Nigeria, don't we? So I've looked at how you speak, and I thought maybe to help, let's do these workshops. So I hope that whatever job you're working that is, um, our requirement there, there is a requirement for you to use English. I hope that this page will be beneficial because as usual I'm mindful of people's data. I'm going to start going at the speed of lightning. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I want to look at conditional tenses. Ooh. They're already on the theme. If you see me looking down and sideways, I'm just double checking to make sure that I'm saying what I have written down. I've got notes which I've made. <laughs> when we started the workshop, we looked at parts of speech and then we moved to tenses. We are now well into week three and we're looking at secondary tenses. So if we hadn't looked at parts of speech, if we hadn't explored the 12 basic tenses, you won't be here today doing conditions because you wouldn't understand them. So I'm going to ask you if you're one of those people who just breathe in and breathe out, that if you have data, can you please go and review parts of speech? And can you please go and give you the basic tenses? Otherwise, you're not going to understand what I'm going to say. There is no if and but about it. I'm going to start to by recapping our knowledge. Let's do a knowledge recap. So I said there are 12 basic tenses. And I broke them up into chunks of four. The present simple. Present continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous. I made them with past tenses. Past simple, past perfect, oops, past continuous, <laughs> past perfect continuous. And they correspond with future tenses. Simple future, future continuous, future perfect, future perfect continuous. And we've also explored parts of speech. If you haven't watched the videos, I would like to ask you to pause at this juncture and go and do that. Because I can tell you categorically, I'm going to start losing you as I proceed. And this was what happened in the first workshop 
and then people submitted the poems, they submitted the stories, and people went long listed. They went long listed because they were making schoolboy errors that I have already gone over. It's your choice who cares. Anyway, so when we talk about conditional tenses, there are four conditions that we refer into. First of all, what is a conditional tense and why would we use or make a conditional statement? If I were going to say something that was possible, a possibility, a likelihood, I might use a conditional tense. And the opposite of that, if, if I was going to state something that was impossible, I might use a conditional statement. And in the middle, if there was something which is unlikely, I might use a conditional um, tense. So my conditional statements would express a probability, a likelihood, an impossibility, a hypothetical situation. In the middle, we have the unlikely. If circumstances change, it would have happened by the minute, given the circumstances. That hasn't happened yet. I'm going to keep it very simple because I want everyone to be able to understand what I'm saying. So I want to start off with the zero conditional. In English, when we talk about the zero conditional, it means it's a fact. If I went to Mars and came back, that would still be a fact. So nothing has changed. We're going to give it one big fact to zero. And this is the case when we have given truths or scientific facts. So my example would be, if it rains in Sierra Leone, the ground gets wet. Let's break up my statement, my sentence into clauses. And I'm going to break up my clauses into parts of speech. That's why you need to have done parts of speech. Otherwise, I'm going to lose you at this point. If it rains in Sierra Leone, that's my first clause. You might want to call it a subordinate clause. Please go and look up what clauses are on my page. A subordinate clause will be working under a main clause. Without the main clause, the subordinate wouldn't function properly. So the main clause is the president and the subordinate clause is his cabinet. So I'm going to start with my subordinate clause. If it ends in Sierra Leone, and I'm going to pause because that's my clause, isn't it? If would necessarily um, not have been there unless I am, was going to link to clauses in it. To confuse you, I have put my conjunction in the initial position. If is actually a conjunction, isn't it? But look at what I've done. I've started my conditional sentence with a conjunction. If. If there is the subject. It is a singular pronoun, isn't it? And it's in the subject position. So it is a subject pronoun. We've done all that, haven't we? How about my verb? Don't forget verbs give me tenses. If you haven't revised verbs, they're on the feed. So if it rains, oh, what's happening with my operative verb? Operative verb, if you don't remember what that is, please go and review what I've got on my feed. My operative verb is in the present simple. If it rains, plus my optic phrase in Sierra Leone. What is the structure of my class? It's if plus present simple, and I'm going to leave it there. So, what about my other class? The ground gets wet. The ground is now my subject, gets, is a verb, in the present simple, wet. 
would describe the state. It's, it's actually functioning as an adjective, isn't it? I could have said the wet ground. Then I would have put my adjective before my noun, which is ground. However, now my adjective is what? It's in a post modifying position, isn't it? It's followed the noun that it is modifying. So in my second clause, I've got the ground gets wet. I'm just stating a fact, and I? It's a scientific fact. I've got if plus present symbol plus present symbol tense. If it rains, the ground gets wet, doesn't it? That's often how we use the zero conditional. We use it in the pres with the present simple tense. I'm going to give you another example. Let's give you a funny sentence that you will um, take away from this video soon to remember how to use it. Um, my humorous statement would be, if President Bill hears music, he dances. If President Bill hears music, he dances. So let's break up my statement, my sentence into two halves, two closets. What is my subordinate class of if President Bill hears? How about my main class? He dances. Basically, what my subordinate clause is doing is working under my main clause, which is he dances. That's a fact. I'm saying that if President Bill was in the barber shop in Circular Road and then he hears a song by Emerson, he's going to get up and he's going to start to dance, isn't he? Because that's what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a fact. If President Bill hears music, he dances. So, Let's look at the structure of my, my sentence. How did I form the conditional? I use if plus the present symbol plus the present symbol. I'm only stating what happens, what occurs all the time. What if I, if, if I was to vary that? So. I'm going to vary my zero condition. Oh, if you want to make palm oil, you need palm kennel. If you want to make palm oil, you need palm kennel. You will need. Don't tell me what's in that palm oil, please. If you want to make Palm oil. You will need palm kennel. If plus want is in the present simple, you will in the next clause is in the simple future tense. So will need is the future, isn't it? It's the future simple which we've already looked at. I'm still saying in a fact though. But this time round, I have varied my tenses. I have used in my subordinate class, I have used the present simple. I've only gone and used the future simple in my main class. Oh my goodness. But I'm still in a zero condition with them. I'm saying there is no way, as far as I'm aware, that if you don't have palm candle, pumpkin, whatever it is, I don't know, then you're going to be able to make palm. I'm not talking about synthetic palm oil. So I have just to recap said that the zero conditional expresses something that happens. Even if I went to Mars and came back, if President Bill hears music, he's going to dance. So when President Bill hears music, he dances. When it rains sincerely on the ground, gets wet. I only use if. I said if it rains sincerely on the ground, gets wet. Before I move on, I want to rewrite the sentence. Because when I said if it was a condition, was a conjunction, people were probably going to look at me and think, what is she saying? It's not in the middle of the sentence. And he had link in the clauses. Okay, well, let's rewrite our sentence then. President Bill dances if he hears music. I've got to my 
conjunction and where you like it in the middle. And it's linking, it's conjoining, it's the conjunction. It's linking two clauses. So I use it in the initial position. Say I went to Abu Bakr's house, the initial position would be the front door. That's what if is. So I'll go, can I see Abu Bakr if we are the front door? That's the initial position. But say I then went to visit Abu Bakr another day, and then if is at the dining table, that would be what? Well, in the middle, wouldn't it? Middle, like in the middle of the of the sentence. So I can put if at Abu Bakr's front door, or I can put it at his dining table. Okay, so that was my zero conditional. Oh, say I want to express the likelihood or the possibility of something happening. It hasn't happened because one situation didn't go well. So there is a possibility that if I change that, if I tweak another situation, there would be this consequence. Let me bring in my friend Baba Tinde. So I'm going to give a fact. I would say Baba Tunde is engaged to F4 and I want you to keep the fact in your head. So I'm going to say if Baba Tunde wins the lotto, he will marry F1. If Baba Tunde wins the lotto, he will marry F1. So don't forget that totally my friend Baba Tunde is engaged to F1. So Baba Tunde is in Lagos. He hasn't won the lotto yet. But the Baba Tunde goes to Ibadan and he walks into the shop and then he buys a scratch card and then he wins the lotto. I know exactly what Baba Tunde is going to do. The consequence of him winning the lotto is he's going to get married to F1. I've just given you the first conditional. The first conditional sentences I use to express situations in which the outcome is likely but not guaranteed to happen in the future. So, Babatunde hasn't won the lotto. I'm saying if he wins the lotto, if plus future single wins. So, Babatunde is he. He wins. So therefore, my verb has taken the S in the present simple form. I said, if Baba Tunde wins the lotto, he will marry F1. I'm not saying for certain, but there's a strong possibility that that's going to happen. Because first of all, Baba Tunde needs to move to Ibadan. He needs to go and buy a scratch can. And maybe, not always, most likely, most likely, he will marry F1. If Baba Tunde wins the lotto, he will marry F1. If plus present simple plus future simple. Um, I'm using that to express a first condition because I've said the consequence depends on an of action or calling. And I'm not 100% sure that's going to happen. My other example would be if the APC doesn't take up office, there will not be an opposition. If the APC doesn't take up office, there will not be an opposition. I'm going to pause because I need to explain something. First of all, let me get the structure of my sentence out of the way. If plus does plus not plus take up, take up, the verb take is a transitive verb, there will not be an opposition. This is a complicated sentence. 
and I'm going to break it up into different parts. First of all, I'm going to identify my clauses. If the APC doesn't take up office, that's clause number one, there will not be an opposition. That's clause number two. Let's look at what my verbs would give me tenses of doing. If the APC does, oh, I have brought in a new auxiliary. We have two auxiliaries in an auxiliary bank. If you follow in the workshop, we have the auxiliary that we use from the verb to be. And then we have the auxiliary that we use from the verb to have. I have only introduced a new word, the verb to do. In English, we can use the verbs to have, the verbs to be, or the verb to do to form auxiliaries. And if you're clever, if you've been following my workshops, you will know an auxiliary it is a helping verb. I'm going to break up my class into sections so you can understand. If the APC does not take up office. I have used a negative statement. I have inserted the word N-O-T. In the affirmative, it would be does take up. In the negative, it is does not or doesn't take up. So I'm complicating things a little bit, but I'm still looking at the first conditional. If the APC does not take up office, let's look at my second clause, which is actually my main clause. There will not be an opposition. What did I say? Did I say you will not? You will not have an opposition. <laughs> you will have is the future simple. Of our, however, that's in the affirmative use. You will not is a negative statement. What have I done with my not? I have put it between my auxiliary will and my main verb have. What did I do with my not in the first clause? I put it between my auxiliary do and take up. If the APC does plus not, plus take up. You will plus not, plus have. So we put not between the two parts of the verb, don't we? I'm going back to where I started before I, I went on to explain about auxiliaries. I said I'm looking at the first condition. So I said, The consequence of the APC not taking up office is there will not be an opposition. My first outcome here, which is that there won't be an opposition, is dependent on the probability of another action or calling. So if plus a present symbol plus future symbol, isn't it? Was how I formed my conditional statement. That's how I did it, isn't it? There is a possibility that they will take up office, isn't it? So it's only, I'm only moving up to the first condition. It's not that impossible, isn't it? Are you still with me? What about if we go back to our friend Babatunde, I want to now make a statement that is completely unrealistic and it would not likely happen in the future. So I'm only going to talk about the second conditional. To recap, I said my first condition is a given. And I gave you a funny sentence. I said, if President B or his music, he dances. 
by me, and then I looked at my first condition. I said, If Baba Tunde wins the lotto, he will marry Efwa. It's very likely Baba Tunde might move to Ibadan and play the lotto to win it, and that hopefully he will win it, and then we know he's going to marry his fiance. How about my second condition, which is going to be such an unlikely situation? It's completely unrealistic. Let's stay with our friend Papatunde for example number one. If Babatunde won a million dollars, he would buy a yacht. I know there's no way Patron is going to win a million dollars because I don't think that's even the father of people. So I'm looking at a situation that is so unrealistic. It's never going to happen, isn't it? So what have I done if Babatunde won a million dollars? My tense in the first class is in the past simple. Win one. I have done something else in my main class. He would. Where did that word would come from? Well, I tell you what happened. Hello and welcome to the tenses shop. We sell all the 12 basic tenses and some secondary ones as well. Would you like a modal verb, please? Yes, please. May I have? Can and could, may and might, must, ought to, I don't want dare. I suppose I should take should and shall. I will have will and would. Do you have any other part-time or semi-modal verbs on sale please? Ta. You know, when I started with my 12 basic tenses, I never used would. I never had a model, did I? So, I went to the tenses shop and I bought verbs which are known as modal verbs. Modal verbs are these. So, these are the words I was sold from the tenses shop. Can. Good. They didn't tell me there because they said it's fallen out of usage. So, bear in mind though that there is also a modal verb. And then they gave me may, might, must came all by itself. Ought to is a conjoined word, isn't it? Ought came with the preposition too. It looks like a phrasal verb, but it's not a phrasal verb at all. It is a model. Ought to. And then the kind shop assistant saw me some more modal verbs, which were shall, should, will, would. She said those are modal verbs. But as I was about to leave the shop, I tell you what she did. She also offered me some of the words which she said were semi modal verbs. I might need them to make conditional statements. So she gave me all the modal verbs and then she gave me some part time modal verbs which were used to, not used to, used to. Do you know any other semi-modal verbs? Okay, so I'm going to go back to my statement about Baba Tunde. If Baba Tunde won a million dollars, he would. So I borrowed my model that I was sold from the tenses shop because I'll need to make up another tense that I don't have. I don't have it. I've, I've gone through all my 12 basic tenses. 
none of them express the probability to the degree that I want to express it. Because I'm talking about something that's not going to happen. So I'm going to use a modal verb. What is a modal verb? A modal verb is simply a word that expresses a probability, a likelihood. It's my joint obligation. I might use it to be more polite, unexpected behaviour. And modal verbs, what they do is they modify the other verb that they support. So modal verbs modify other verbs. So if Babatunde won a single past simple, a million dollars, he would. I'm in trouble now, and I? Because I've got a new tent which I bought from the tent shop. How am I going to use? a model to express a condition. With model verbs, they like to work with infinitives, don't they? If there isn't an infinitive, you have to start looking for a perfect tense. So where you see a model, you're going to have to look for an infinitive. We probably are going to start looking for a perfect tense. Don't forget the various forms of perfect tenses, aren't there? And I'll get to that in a bit. So, if the button they won a million dollars, he would buy a yacht. Buy there is the infinity. Don't you know that the infinity has two forms? You do, don't you? Because we've looked at that. We've said to buy or buy are both forms of the infinity. Now, I can say if Babaton won the lottery, he would to buy a yacht because Mr. Syntax wouldn't like it. So if Babatunde won the lottery, the lotto, he would buy a yacht. Would plus buy. That's a new tense, isn't it? And I said I use a modal verb. And I said I use an infinitive with it, didn't I? And that was my second condition. Let's give another example. Oh, Beyonce is one of my favourite singers. And this is one of my favourite songs. If I were a boy, I would chase after girls. So, if plus the past single, Plus one, plus the infinity. It's the same conjugation, isn't it? Usually we say I was because we use the singular um, pronoun, the singular subject pronoun, plus the singular form of the verb to be I was. However, I'm expressing a hypothetical situation. It's so unreal, it ain't going to happen. So Beyonce says, I'm, I'm a woman, and I. But she said, if I were, a boy. If I were a boy, plus I would chase, chase, there is in the infinity. We can say, if I were a boy, I would to chase, because Mr. Syntax wouldn't like it. So we drop the preposition to, if I were a boy, I would chase after girls. If, plus the present simple, plus the model plus the infinitive now that's an unreal situation when we did this workshop back in january february time a lot of you that were followers then laughed at this my example my example was if i were a millionaire i would marry a sierra leone toy boy Oh, I'm not a millionaire. I'm a poor mom, and I. That's an unlikely, that's an impossible situation. Not even unlikely. Impossible, hypothetical situation. It's so unreal, it ain't gonna happen. Not in my lifetime. If I were a millionaire, I would marry 
a Sega Leonian toy boy. I have the intentions of buying a Sega Leonian toy boy because I'm never going to be a millionaire. So my conditional sentence is what is in the second conditional form, isn't it? And to make up the second conditional, I used what tenses? I used the simple past. And I also used the model, didn't I? And I used the infinitive. I am going to confuse you a little bit now. Because I'm going to go back to my friend Babatunde. Remember when I said Babatunde is with F what? I said Babatunde was going to do something, didn't I? If he won the loto, he would marry F1. If plus past simple plus word plus infinitive. Can I say, if you're worried about your data, please stop. Let's just, um, come back in the future to continue watching this. Bear in mind that, that we have followers from other countries who do not really worry about the data bundle as much. So, when I said if Babatunde won the lotto, he would marry Efua, I was thinking of what Babatunde told me a long, long time ago. So, I'm now going to use our historic past tense because when I had the conversation with Babatunde about Efua, it was when I was in Lagos. I was in Lagos. But I was in Lagos five years ago. I've never been to Lagos. Okay, so five years ago, Papa Tunde said to me, if I won the lotto, I would marry my girlfriend, Efwa. I want to report that to you today in 2023. I'm going to use a historic past tense. You know the historic past tense, don't you? Because we've covered it. The past perfect. And you know, to make up that tense, what I did was I borrowed my auxiliary from my auxiliary shop, have. And then I worked with my past participles, which I said are designated words. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to make up the past perfect. And I know that it works with the past tense of the verb to have. So, Baba Tunde, I'm going to report to you. If Baba Tunde had won the lotto, had won, it's in the past perfect. He would have married a one. Now, I cannot say he would have in a sense. Mr. Syntax would not like it. <laughs> so, if Babbitton then had won the lotto five years ago, he would have married a one. And we put in something that was a given. I was I'm reporting something that would have happened five years ago. And because I used the perfect tense, I needed an object anyway, would um because the perfect tense doesn't really stand on its own. So let's look at my clauses. If Babatun they had won the lotto is my subordinate clause. It's working underneath my main clause, which is, he would have married a four. So is it still like my first conditional? I've gone back to my first conditional, but I've only reported it. So I'm reporting my first condition. It's very likely that Baba Chunda is going to move to Ibadan and that he's going to win the lotto, isn't it? So Baba Chunda was saying five years ago, if he moved to Ibadan and he won the lotto, he would marry F1. If Papa Tunde had won the lotto, he would have married F1. Okay, so I've looked at the zero condition. I have looked at the first condition. And I've looked at the second condition. I know I went back and forth. But 
you don't really have to know whether it's the first, the second, or the third condition. All you have to know is the construction. So what matters here is you know that I'm using if to look at the likelihood or the possibility or the probability or the improbability of something or calling. Oh, so what if I want to make another conditional statement? And if I want to use the third condition, so with the third condition, I am going to be thinking about a situation that is likely and the circumstances would have been different if something else had happened previously. I'm going to use the APC as an example. We know that the APC could have won, so I'm going to say if the APC had campaigned intensively, they would have won the elections. If the APC had campaigned intensively, that's my first class, they would have won the elections. Oh, so what have I gone and done? I'm now stating something that did not happen. It could have happened. So, they would have won the elections, would have been the consequence of an intensive campaign. Isn't that what I'm saying? I'm saying it's possible, it's probable, it's likely, isn't it? So I'm doing what you know us making a third conditional statement. I am saying the only reason why A, they did not win was because B, they hadn't campaigned intensively. So I'm saying one action was dependent on another or calling. If the APC had campaigned intensively, it's my first class, they would have won the elections. So had campaigned, what is it? You're going to tell me because you're clever that it is the past perfect tense. You're going to tell me that because we've done it. I've used the auxiliary had and I've used the past participle. And it's exactly how I made my other sentence, didn't I? Plus we. Plus another form of the perfect tense, which is the present perfect. Now I'm going to take you back to when I started, if you're still with me, if you're still updating. I said, when I went to the shop and I bought a model verb, I'm going to use my model with an infinitive, or I'm going to use my model with perfect tenses. That's how I'm going to use them. You might hear them referred to as modal perfect. Model perfect continuous. Okay, so I'm going to break up my sentence to, for you to see what tenses I have utilized. If the APC, the APC is my subject, had campaigned, I said that's in the past perfect intensively. Is my adverb ending in ly? They is my subject pronoun. It's replacing my proper noun. The APC. Would plus how plus one. Oh my goodness. I've got a model and I've got the present perfect tense. Remember when I said Mr. Syntax wouldn't like me saying would plus had, plus one, first of all, the cancel closed the road. So that's the fact I want to keep in your head. 
I'm going to say, if the road is closed, oh, what have I done? I have used a passive voice. I need to explain this because you probably haven't watched my video. Sentences might be in the active or in the passive voice. So, cancel is the subject plus the verb, close plus road. The cancel close the road. That's what they do. The cancel close the roads. They do it all the time. The cancel close the roads. In my active voice, I've got the structure. Subject plus verb plus object. Another noun in it. Road is a common noun, isn't it? The cancel is a noun. What is it? What type of noun is it? Is it capitalized? Does that give it away? What types of nouns do we capitalize? Do you capitalize your name? What sort of noun is it? <laughs> okay, so my clause, the cancel closed the road. If the cancel closed the road, If the cancel closed the road, okay, if the roads are closed, if the roads are closed, you should, you should use the diversion. If the roads are closed, you should use the diversion so if plus are closed is a passive voice in it you plus she plus the infinitive use how about these variations i might have been resting if your phone call hadn't woken me up, I might have been resting if your phone call hadn't woken me up. Let's have a look at the sentence structure. Modal plus present perfect continuous plus if plus past perfect shall i say the sentence once more i might plus have plus been plus resting plus if your phone call plus had plus not plus working me up. So, in the first part of my sentence, in the first class, did you hear me say, I might have been resting? So, did you identify the tenses? If you did, you must have done it correctly because you probably watched the videos that I have on the feed. So, the construction was modal plus present perfect continuous, wasn't it? Do you know it as the modal progressive or modal continuous tense? To break it down, we say modal plus present perfect continuous. Oh, how about the next clause? If your phone call had not woken me up. Did I also say, if your phone call hadn't woken me up? What did I do there? You must have noticed that I've inserted an N-O-T. Did I shorten it as well to the contracted form? So where did I insert it? If your phone call had, as the auxiliary from the verb to have, not came between that and the past participle, didn't it? 
This is some of the ways that we use the conditionals as we speak, when we speak in everyday use of English. So in colloquial English, you might not be as formal as when you write in it. Practice using the modal verb might. You might come to England one day and all you're going to hear is might. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to finish up by making a conditional statement. I hope you have learned something from part one of the workshop. Listen to my conditional statement. I hope you have learned something from the workshop. If you haven't, I have wasted my time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with us for the entire month of September, if you did. And this is going to usher in part two of the workshop. I know, Dorcas and Davey have been keeping a secret. You'll hear the secret very soon, ladies and gents. <laughs>